Welcome to the Science of Effective Scene Lighting. I'm your host, Sam Massa. Now let's talk about the practical application. We know how scene lights are measured, we know what different source types are available, and we know what makes a scene light reliable. The next steps are gonna be how do we reduce glare on the fire scene and improve the effective light in the areas where we're working. We don't need to be lighting scientists, but we have to be able to work at night when the fire alarm goes off and we're called to do our job. The key to reducing glare on the fire scene is to increase the elevation. You can use the natural shape of the human face as well as the PPE that the firefighters are wearing to eliminate the amount of light that hits the firefighter in the eye and project more of that light onto the top of their head or onto the top of the helmet. High-sided rescue trucks, ladder trucks, lights where you can put lights up on a light tower, all of those things are a way to eliminate the light shining directly in the eyes of the firefighter and get it up out of their eyes to reduce glare. It's really important when designing a scene lighting package to think about the shape and size of the truck and all the accessories you'll have on that truck. Think about things like how many feet of cross light do you have? You don't need a thousand feet of light when you only have 250 feet of cross light. But when you're designing a scene lighting package, think about how many feet of hose you have, how many feet of rescue line you have, and develop your scene lighting package to effectively illuminate the area where you're most likely to be working. There are two types of optics that can be chosen when you're producing light on a fire scene. There's a symmetrical optic, which produces the same shape of light almost in any orientation. Think about the beam pattern looking almost like a short, fat traffic cone. The other shape of light is an asymmetric optic where the light shines down and out. Now, if you think about a fire truck, if you've got slam doors or you've got a light recessed off the side or the back area of a truck, think about like where your hard suctions are, you don't wanna have an asymmetric optic shining light down into an area that's not gonna hit the fire ground and gonna hit the truck. So in those applications, think about a symmetrical optic. If you're on the side of an ambulance or like maybe a rescue truck with roll-up doors and that fixture is right on the edge of the body, you can shine light straight down and have almost zero degree angle of light output in the area where you're working. That's a perfect application for an asymmetric optic. The most important principle in this whole lesson should be that the intensity of light around the fire truck is less important than the even distribution of light around the fire truck. Think about as you're walking, maybe going from your office during this bright summer months, you go outside in the parking lot and it blinds you because your eyes have to constrict, and then you come back inside and it feels like the whole place is dark. Similarly, as you're walking around a fire scene, the more times your eyes have to adjust to an increase in light output or a decrease in light output, the more you're going to fatigue as an operator working at night. So when you consider a scene lighting package, you want to create a scene lighting package that reduces the number of times that the operator has to go from an area of high intensity to an area of low intensity, because that reduces the optic fatigue on the operators working around the scene. It doesn't have to cost you a lot more to create this type of package. If you've got four 20,000 lumen fixtures or 10 8,000 lumen fixtures, the cost of those fixtures is about the same. It's a little more expensive to wire them, but the effective light output being on the fire scene is bar none far better when you have an even distribution of light. All right guys, here's the summary. Height is the key to reducing glare on the fire scene. So mount your fixtures as high as you can get them. If you need a light tower, use a light tower. If you need pole lights, use pole lights. If you're building a high-sided rescue, get those fixtures up out of the eyes of the firemen. The temperature of the circuit is the number one contributing factor to premature failure of an LED scene light. So pick a fixture that doesn't get too hot. If you have a cab where you're looking forward off the face of the cab, or you've got slam doors, pick a symmetrical optic. You need to put the light in the area that matters. If you have a clear view of the ground or roll-up doors, pick an asymmetric optic. That's going to be most advantageous. And the last point is that fixture performance is less important than fixture placement. I can't stress this enough. You want to have that even distribution of scene lighting around the fire truck. And if you can get that even distribution, your guys will be able to work safely after dark. For more information, check us out online at highvisleds.com or reach out to a fire tech scene lighting expert for a hand.